in this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. <laughs> get it, Corey, get him! It appears that Cranberry is having her second episode of choking. We're gonna pass a tube and make sure that we can dislodge it if it's still lodged somewhere. So we have Todd out here today. Todd is gonna be doing some riding evaluations. We've been talking about the secret we have and different plans we've been working on. And today we were able to release that. You don't wanna miss a single second of Horse Shelter. The Washington DC trip went really, really well. We went to a lot of different meetings and passed out a lot. Like I got down to like the last brochure and I was like, man, it would be so nice to have more. And I'm gonna be adding to the little booklet that we were giving out. And I would really, really love to be able to get that booklet into every office there for the, the different representatives because we were stopping in if they weren't supporting the PAST Act and the SAFE Act and these other acts to protect horse welfare. And if they were supporting it, we went in and personally thanked them and they were so grateful. And I really think that's important because they can end horse slaughter. And I, when I was up there, I was like, I would, be, I would love to be put out of a job. And that was, that was my, my thing. Now, obviously Horse Plus does tons and tons of different programs, but our slaughter pipeline rescues, it would be wonderful if we didn't have to do those anymore. And we were just helping horses, just like the dog and cat community is helping dogs and cats. So we'll see what happens. But I'm, I, think, I think the trip went really, really good and I'm really excited to go back again um, as soon as we can get everything together and get some support for another trip. So we're so excited because there is an adopter here to pick up Tails that was rescued in a recent seizure. And we're so happy that Tails is getting a new home today. So congratulations, you are now the proud owner of Tails. You can go ahead and move his photo from looking to love to found love over there. It seems good. Thank you guys. My name is Carol and I actually saw um, the Facebook post um, about the horse rescue and that you had rescued um, some animals from a seizure and I saw the bunny on there and so I called and wanted to adopt him. I just want to thank you guys for doing what you do. We need more people like that. Corey, get him! Machete! Stay still! How did he escape, Corey? I was trying to put him back in the box to take him home. Oh, no. So Machete has been a um, really mean rooster to my wife, so now I gave it to Corey and uh, it escaped. Oh. <laughs> Ah, I'm tired already. Come on, give us a break. So I opened up the cage, put him in the box so I could take him home. And he was all the way at the back of the cage, so I couldn't really reach him. So Angela went around to try to push him towards me, and he got right past me. So we got him caught. Um, luckily, we got 14 acres, so he could just roam around there. And we have about 20 hens, so him and our other rooster could share. exciting we got a box today from the unwanted horse veterinary relief campaign i submitted a grant application a couple months ago asking for donated vaccines and this amazing organization sent us 
20 free five-way vaccines and 20 rabies vaccines. So that's like a thousand dollars worth of product. All of our horses that come through Horse Plus Humane Society have these core vaccines. So this was amazing of this organization to donate to us. It's gonna help us care for 20 horses. So thank you guys so much. We will definitely use all of these. This is a rabies vaccine and these are our five way. Thanks, Merck. I am off to Love at First Sight in Nashville. They take puppies from eight to 12 weeks. So we got these four that are gonna go transferred to them today. <laughs> Look at how cute they are. Yeah. I am off to Love at First Sight in Nashville. They have an adoption event this weekend, so these four will hopefully get adapted. So four of our amazing dogs have been transferred to High Forest Humane Society here in Homewald. We are so happy that they are gonna go to a place where they can find forever homes. So we've got Finnick and Sadie, they were from the same litter. And then Ashley, she also came in with the two of them. And then Otis, our crazy Aussie doodle. Um, I am so hopeful that they will get to go to an adoption event soon and find amazing homes. Endless views that we're passing through Making our way to a distant place Just us two Somewhere new Somewhere new So you may be wondering why all these flags are out here behind me. Well, um, we're gonna be revamping our obstacle course. Um, we're gonna be upgrading it. We're gonna be adding more obstacles. It's kind of more fun things for the horses to learn kind of different skills on. And also potentially we will be opening it up to the public in some situations. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna look yet, but it is something that is definitely in the works. I can kind of walk you through a little bit of what it all is. So this right here is going to be like a gate obstacle. So you can ride your horse through a gate, work on opening and closing a gate on top of your horse. We're going to have different sets of poles. So this will be some poles on the ground that horses can learn how to pick up their feet over. We're going to have different platforms horses can walk up on. We're going to have two different bridges. We're going to have a giant pyramid platform thing. So it's a step up about five different times until you get to the top platform, which I'm hoping will be about this high. And I'm six foot three, so it's gonna be a pretty tall obstacle there. We're gonna have a trailer box that simulates trailer loading and closing a horse into a trailer. We're also gonna have a really cool obstacle over here that I wanna talk about real quick. This ditch pretty much has water in it year round. So we're gonna utilize that. We're going to add more water to it and we're going to have a 20 foot by 10 foot water obstacle right here that we can ride the horses down into. Uh, we're still working on the details of how deep the water is actually going to be, but I'm pretty excited for this uh, new endeavor that Horse Plus is getting into. So something that we will need a lot of for this obstacle course is chert. Um, we're going to be using a lot of chert to build our obstacles. Um, we're going to need giant tractor tires, we're gonna need railroad ties, we're gonna need a lot of stuff like that. So if you know of anything like that, and know of anybody that would wanna donate stuff like that, please give us a call. Today I'm working on a little bit of weed control around the property, spraying fence lines so the horses don't try and push the gate down, trying to get it to grass. Gonna finish out the day spraying the rest of these fence lines and hopefully by the end of the week all the weeds will start dying.
My name is Haley and I am a videographer and editor here at Horse Plus Humane Society. I have a love for videography and animals, so I kind of put the two together. I realized I could help the horses and any other animals since we have the Horse Plus in it. And so being able to be kind of like an animal photographer, videographer is what I really wanted to do. Currently, one of my main duties is filming the horses through the buyout program. And I document when they arrive up until their adoption day. I get to go to different places and film a lot of the grants that we give out to different uh, organizations. And so we recently, me and my sister, were able to go to Costa Rica. And you guys have hopefully have seen the video. It's super cool. They're doing great things down there. We were able to provide a grant to help with all the castrations. And it's super, super cool. And then I also take photos of the animals and update their photos on Shelter Love for the adoption page. My favorite thing about Horse Plus is the opportunity to help all the animals that we do. Being a videographer and spreading the word about the buyout program and getting horses to a better situation, I think is really, really critical. And I really enjoy getting their stories out. I think overall just spreading awareness um, that we're taking the responsibility that some owners don't and kind of putting that out there so that more pet owners will realize, okay, I've got to step up and do my part. Some of the hobbies that I enjoy outside of work include hiking, um, me and my sister go a lot on the weekends, especially since the weather's becoming a lot nicer and warmer. We're going out hiking more. Um, I also enjoy just watching movies, playing with my cat back home. And then when I get the chance to go back to my original home, which is in Louisiana, we have three dogs there and I love playing with them, getting to interact and just anything to do with animals, honestly, I'm, I'm there for it. One of my other hobbies is when I have the chance to take wildlife or nature photos. And so that leads me to one of my favorite animals is actually the deer. Um, it's really cool. They're super graceful and cool to look at. And I love taking photos of them. So I'd have to say one of my favorite animals is the deer. It appears that Cranberry is having her second episode of choking. So we are going to give her some dorm right now. Dr. Lydia already gave it some banamine and we're gonna pass a tube and make sure that we can dislodge it if it's still lodged somewhere. Always wanna make sure our tube end is the rounded one because we don't wanna cause irritation. So one of these ends is nice and soft. So good confirmation that you're in the right spot is when you get ingested back out that tube. So we have a little bit of blood in our tube, which can be normal from irritation. Um, Nosebleeds are very common with this, so. I know. There we go. Can I add a tiny bit more water? Okay. We're right at the level of the joke. It's, it's right there. now. <laughs> I think I have it cleared. I'm gonna pull this tube. Just finished passing a nasogastric tube on cranberry. She was choking, which means she had food that was stuck partway down in her esophagus. So we passed the tube up the nose, down through the esophagus, and we basically moved the clog of food down with some water from a pump. She got a little bit of a nosebleed, um, which is very, very common. The mucosa of the nose is super, super irritated, but we were able to alleviate the choke. We gave her some pain and anti-inflammatory medication. Um, vet team is gonna be busy inside today, so Corey's moving her to a location where he can keep a super close eye on her as she recovers. 
Our biggest concern is that this is the second time cranberries choked and her teeth aren't the problem. So there's a chance that she has a scar in her esophagus and we'll probably ultrasound that area to see if there's a scar, how severe it is. She may need to have her food soaked for the rest of her life, which isn't a big deal, but um, we're a little concerned about the long term, even though the short term problem has been taken care of. So we are getting the area prepped and ready for um, Phoenix castration. He's a crypt orchid, so his right testicle has not descended into his um, scrotum. So we're gonna do a paramedian approach where she, Dr. Lee is gonna incise and go through the side of the abdomen and find that testicle and remove it, and then we'll remove the other testicle. And then after that, he'll get a haul of his things. I see the testicle! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, fantastic. Oh. Right, I'm gonna take my gloves off so I can see you. Oh, that's Thanks. so wonderful, thank you. Woo! Yay, you guys, I'm so happy we found it. Okay. Dr. Gina and Kimberly and I just finished Finnick's surgery. Finnick is a tiny, tiny dog. He only weighs four and a half pounds. He had his adult canine, so he was old enough to get neutered, but one of his testicles was retained in his abdomen. So we had to do a much more invasive procedure where we went into the abdomen. Um, thankfully, we were able to find the intra-abdominal testicle and remove it. So he's been successfully neutered and he's in recovery and doing great. So we have Todd out here today. Todd is gonna be doing some riding evaluations, just kind of see where uh, some of these horses are at that I really can't ride because I'm just too big. So I think we have at least 10 for him to look at today. Um, Emily's starting to run him down, so I'm about to go help her out and then figure out who all we're bringing down. We have a little foot in right now and uh, he's about to get his riding eval to see what he needs and where he's at. So this is Littlefoot. He is a level two riding horse. I mean, really good. Rides with foot pressure, neck reins, backs, does everything really well. First time seeing the obstacles, he challenged himself and he took them. He did all the obstacles that were needed. So get a little bit of weight and uh, a little bit more ride time, build his top line up, he should be good to go. So this is Cranberry and she is up next for the riding evaluation. So this is Cranberry. She's got to have an experienced handler rider right now as she just had her colt taken off of her side. So she's a little wound up. She rides good. She understands everything you need to do. She's just hyper and needs some time to settle down and get some more miles on her. So this is Sundance. He's approximately 16 year old gelding, super laid back, probably an old lesson horse that got sour. So he's make a great lead pony or if you really wanted to work with him, get him out, he'd probably do a little trail riding. So he's safe, ain't gonna throw you off. Todd got through eight horses today um, to evaluate. There is a few that um, are broke to ride. We got good levels on them. There's a couple that needed further diagnostics. So we were Happy to figure that stuff out, and now we know what to do going forward. All right, we're up here in quarantine today. I'm gonna be pressure washing all this dirt and algae off the side of the barn. We just finished cleaning the quarantine barn, and it looks a lot more white and shiny than it did before. So we've got most of the horses run up. There's still one horse out here that we're trying to find, or at least I'm trying to find right now. 
Um, I'm up here by myself. I don't have service up here. Uh, there's never any service back here in quarantine. I did bring the sat phone with me though. That's right. If you go to sat123.com horse plus and get one of these life saving devices, horse plus will earn a commission, which will help us save more horses. So we can call somebody out here to help me out. This amazing satellite phone with its small yet powerful form factor delivers trusted, rugged, reliable communications all in an easy to use handset. All right, you're coming up. All right, thanks. Bye. So this thing really does come in handy, especially in rural Tennessee. There's just some places that do not have service. Um, it's made by Iridium and you can get yours today by going to sat123.com. If you go to sat123.com horse plus and get one of these life saving devices, horse plus will earn a commission, which will help us save more horses. So we have Drifter in right now. We're getting him all cleaned and prepped, ready for some joint injections. We're gonna inject his hocks bilaterally because he has some mild lameness. I am using chlorhexidine scrub to clean Drifter's hock joint for his joint injections. We wanna make sure that we're not introducing bacteria that lives on the skin into the joint itself. And it's actually, the data shows that it's better not to clip than to just scrub and reduce as much bacteria as we want. So we're gonna approach both of the joint spaces from the lateral aspect of the joints. And right now I'm just sudsing it up and letting that soak and reduce that bacterial population. So we are injecting one of the lower joints in um, Drifter's Hawks today. Dr. Gina and I finished doing as sterile a prep as we can get, and then we're gonna pull up two different drugs in a sterile manner. One is kind of a joint fluid replacement, and the other one is a corticosteroid. And we're gonna combine those in one syringe, place a needle into the joint space, and then inject that into the joint and pull the needle out. Dr. Gina just finished Drifter's joint injections. She did a fantastic job and he's got some sharp points on some of his premolars that we're gonna reduce because he's already sedated and he's in here anyway. Oh, actually. He's got really great teeth. He has a point on this premolar and then this arcade has a little bit of a sharp lip but I don't think it's gonna be a super challenging one. Ooh, you had a lot of treats. There's stuff all Ooh, over. See? I won't promise I'll go back oh in if I can just see. Oh, he's so strong. His tongue is so strong. He is a very strong boy. I think it's reduced Yay. enough that I think okay. he'll be okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to blind you. No, you did a great job. We just finished up with Drifter. He got hock injections and his teeth floated. He was a very, very good boy. Drifter is almost completely sound. He's just a little bit short strided in his hind legs. So we're hopeful that those hock injections get him all the way sound so that he can be adopted out as a riding horse. We have an announcement. Horse Plus Humane Society is constantly growing, um, and with the growth comes job position changes. Um, I have been the assistant manager and receptionist for a little while now, and I really struggle with dyslexia, um, and I'm not the most creative person in the world. So me and Tanya and Angela decided that there was somebody that works here that has amazing customer service, an amazing sweet voice, and a very kind heart. Um, and she's super creative. Um, and that lovely person is Emily. So Emily, what will you now be doing? I will now be doing the receptionist part of your job, 
I will be assisting Corey with the level one and two horses, riding them and getting them out for everyone to see so that they can get adopted. And then I will also be dealing with the small animal intakes. And I will no longer be an assistant manager. I will be the new vet assistant and I will be doing record keeping. So I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> but I am leaving the office in amazing hands and I'm so excited for Emily because I feel this is a position where she can grow and I'm excited for myself because I love animal medicine. <laughs> we've been talking about the secret we have and different plans we've been working on and today we were able to release that Bob Barker, when he passed, we got a letter in the mail. We were named in his estate. It was $100,000 left to Horse Plus through Bob Barker's estate and there was 40 organizations that his estate was split by and it was animal welfare and military. And for Horse Plus to be named as one of those organizations is just such an incredible honor. We have amazing plans for um, the money that he left to Horse Plus Humane Society. So we will be building a spay neuter clinic and it's actually gonna be off site, so it's going to be off of Highway 48 on some property that's right there, so great visibility. It's, it's really the only way we're going to lower the number of unwanted animals in this area is through spay and neuter, but it, it still takes about five to six years um, for the, the numbers to actually start seeing a difference. But spay and neuter is key. We will be building a um, education center so that we have the building already, but we're just going to be re revamping it and repurposing it as an education center. And then Corey has been working on an obstacle course and that will be uh, also in his memory as well for the horses to, to be able to ride through and it'll help them find homes uh, better. So super just honored that uh, Bob Barker estate like we were named in that estate that's so amazing and the amount of good that that money is going to do here uh, in the community and also to help horses we plan on doing a ceremony and uh, we'll have a big check there and it's a very significant uh, milestone for horse plus to be recognized in this way and also have the funding to be able to make a significant change for animals so it's very exciting all the way around and Bob Barker was just such an amazing person and his motto was have your pet spayed or neutered and so we're going to continue that for him and um, it's just an amazing honor. Bobo is getting adopted so testing out doing an adoption by myself for the most part. The adopters just left. Bobo's got himself a brand new home and we are very excited to see updates on how he's doing. <laughs>